Hallelujah. Thank God for grace. This morning, I'd like to speak about praise and grace. We talk about praising God. Praising God is for what he has done for us. Worshiping God is for who he is. Amen? Both have a, a similar, but the thing is, the, our target is different. Worship for who God is. Praise for what he's doing for us. We spoke about John Newton a number of times. John Newton was a slave ship captain, a murderer, an alcoholic, a drunk, a pervert. But he wrote a beautiful song that became his testimony called Amazing Grace. And there's an interesting phrase in it that says, We've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. You know, every day with Jesus is an adventure. It's not a thank you one time. It's not a praise you one time. It's every day. Amen? Along the way. No matter how much we try, we cannot begin to comprehend the beauty and the nature of our fi final destination. We spoke about it a couple of weeks ago. What it's going to be like walking into the gates, through the gates of heaven, seeing all those who have gone before, being able to ask Paul, why did you do that? Why did you say that? Being able to talk to Moses and, and Adam and Eve and all of these people and our, our loved ones that have gone before us. What a wonderful day. And it's forever. Amen? Forever. Our final destination is heaven. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We spoke about this already, that the glory of God and the meeting of all these loved ones before us, the peace and the joy, no pain, no death, no sorrow awaits us in the heaven of heavens. Hallelujah. People afraid of dying, for us dying is just changing our address. Hallelujah. Our text this morning is found in the first book of Corinthians, the 13th chapter. As you find it in your Bible, would you stand with me as we honor the Word of God? 1 Corinthians chapter 13, beginning at verse 9. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. You see, we don't know everything in this world, do we? A lot of people think they do, but they don't. But when that which is perfect is come, the Lord Jesus, then that which is in part shall be done away. One day when we get to heaven, we'll know all the answers to our questions. Why this and why that? Why did this happen to me? And so on. When I was a child, Paul says, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, when I became a woman, I put away childish things. Hallelujah. For now we see through a glass darkly, hmm? like a tinted glass. But then face to face, now I know in part, but then I shall know even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, and charity, which is love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. The Lord bless the reading of his word. Bless the servant as he brings it forth. You may be seated. <clears throat> you see, right now we see through a glass darkly. We don't know all the answers. We don't see all the answers. But then we're going to see it all, just to walk into the presence of God. Wow. So we'll have eternity forever to worship and to praise our Father in heaven for his love and his grace towards us. Because without it, we couldn't be there. Hmm? Grace that we don't deserve. This grace is so powerful. It is so powerful because it can take the worst person. Think of the worst person you know. And God can change him into the best person. Even ISIS can get saved. <laughs> We're talking about bombing these people and blowing them up and finding out where they are and so on when they really need Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. Oh, when we, we enter into heaven, our first emotion, our first is going to be of thankfulness. Thank you, God. Our gratitude to God for his mercy and his grace toward us because we don't belong there in our own right, but because of the grace of Jesus Christ, because of the grace that God has given us, we have a right to be in heaven. Our sins forgiven, washed away in the blood of Jesus. And again, remember this, 
God forgives our sin, but there are consequences. Hmm? All right, that's another sermon. That beautiful song, Amazing Grace, that John Newton wrote was actually his testimony. He wrote it in music. It's played at, at funerals. It's played at events. People love the tune, but they don't realize the words. It starts out with these words. Amazing grace that saved a wretch. Look it up in the dictionary. There's nothing good about a wretch. It's every negative thing a person can be that saved a wretch like me. Oh, hallelujah. That's the one thing you can be. That's your, te- your, 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 your lead into telling someone about Jesus. Do you know what? I was a wretch, and God saved me and changed me. Hallelujah. What a precious gift from God. How do we react when we receive an unexpected Undeserved, beautiful gift from God. Hmm? When we came to Christ, we were given a gift. We were given a gift of forgiveness and hope and peace and joy and so on. We're so thankful. But you know what? It's not a one-time thing. Every day, God gives us grace. Is there anybody in here that doesn't sin every day? I'm glad we got some honest people. Grace, the undeserved, unmerited favor of God. Oh, hallelujah. The Jewish people had a kind of cultural thing. They forgave you three times. After that, you didn't get forgiveness anymore. When Peter heard Jesus talking about that, he said, I forgive seven times. Wow, a very gracious of you, Peter. And the Lord says you need to forgive 70 times 7, which is an idiomatic expression meaning never stop forgiving because we have been forgiven by God and it never ends. Hallelujah. Thank God for that. When God forgives us and gives us these gifts, we may feel humbled. We may feel uplifted. We may even feel undeserving. And we want to express our gratitude to him, our thanks to the one giving us this gift. That's what praise and worship is all about. We praise him because of what he's doing and what he's done. We worship because of what he is. And what does he expect of us in return? To tell others the same thing that someone told us. That we can change. We don't have to be what our parents were. We don't have to fall under the generational curses. We don't have to be ruled by addiction or anger or or, unforgiveness, or all the things that are ruining people's lives. Hate, racism, all these things. God can forgive us, and he expects us to forgive others. Our witness is what God has done in our life because people are looking for the same thing, but in the wrong places. That thankfulness, that gratitude can only be expressed, really, in proportion to the value of the gift. What can compare with your salvation? Hmm? What can compare to it in value? What could you say about it? It's worth what? A billion dollars? What is it worth? There's no way to value your salvation. You can't buy it. It's given to you as a free gift as you open your heart to Jesus. So thankfulness is not just to sing it on Sunday, but every day. Every day, when you get that thought, when you pass somebody in the street and they're laying there in the gutter, and you say, oh, man, that could have been me. Thank you, Lord. Hey, brother, you don't have to be here. Jesus saves. He changes. God loves you. You don't have to preach a sermon. Just give him the word, and the word will do what it's supposed to do as they open their heart. You see, it's amazing how Paul describes prophetically the time we live in. We heard a lot from Brother Chow last week, giving us the Korean perspective of what we look like as Americans. Second Timothy, the third chapter, and the first two verses for your notes says this. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times shall come. 
Is there anybody in here that doesn't realize that? That you can't go anywhere without thinking, gee, I wonder if somebody's going to come in here with a gun or a bomb or whatever, right? We got idiots on the subway slashing people even the, this morning I heard on the radio. Happened even in England. It's ha not just happening here, it's happening all over the world. People have gone completely nuts. Why? Because the devil knows his time is up. And he's stirring up these evil spirits that are affecting people's lives. But know this, in the last days, perilous times will come. And they're here. For men and women be, be, will be lovers of themselves. Why, that's not true, is it? How much money do you spend on, you, on yourself? Hair, makeup, clothes, cars, exercise, vitamins. I laugh when people say they don't believe in God. I says, you don't? You, your own God. Hmm? Lovers of themselves. If you want this woman, buy this car. Wear these shoes. Oh, we talk about that we, in the Bible study Wednesday night. We are manipulated into all these things to do these things so people will say, wow, what a wonderful person that is, right? Lovers of money. That's not true, is it? Mm hmm. Mm. Is there ever enough money? I remember a story about a very, very wealthy man who was asked the question, how much is enough? And what he said was, a little bit more. J.C. Penney, you, you know the store, the man that founded those stores was a Christian. J.C. and Penny meant Jesus Christ and Penny. He went to, into business with God. If you read his story, he was in his 90s. He was still teaching Sunday school in church. He was a multi, 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 multi billionaire. And interviewed one day by a young reporter who found out all these things about him and said, Mr. Penny, why do you give so much money to, to church? He founded missions, trips, and all kinds of churches all over the world. And he looked at this young man and he says, why do you think I'm rich? How much money can you have? And then you get a little pimple on your head, and the doctor says, I'm afraid you're going to die. What good is the money? Hmm? I know, and you know, if you read the book, that we have everything in heaven. And guess what? We won't need a credit card or money. Hallelujah. And it lasts forever, like some of the products they sell to us. Oh, this lasts forever. These LED lights are supposed to last forever. Mm, 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 right? Boasters. Oh, we have people boasting about who they are and what they're doing. Even Christians on, the, on TV. Oh, I get sick of it. Boasting about their Rolex watches and their, their cars and how God loves them and blesses them. That's not in the Bible. Mm, mm, mm. They got to answer to God for that. Proud. Oh, we're so proud of things. Blasphemous, right? We don't want a God we trust. We don't want the Ten Commandments. Hmm? Blasphemous. Take a look at something. If you watch TV, you'll see, oh, we want to save the elephants. We want to save the lions. We want to save the cats and the dogs, right? What about the babies? You get arrested for kicking the dog. How could intelligent people believe that by killing a little baby to save someone else's life? That that's not blasphemy. Hmm? Taking God's word and throwing it back in a negative. Hmm? Is blasphemy, God loves me so I can have a same-sex partner and marry them. Hmm? I was interviewed, interviewed by the UN about that, and I knew if I started giving them scripture, that's not what they were, they were looking for that. 
I says, let me tell you something. I worked eight years in the village as a cop. I don't understand why a man who doesn't like women wants to marry a man that acts like a woman. Why does a woman who doesn't like men want to marry a woman that acts like a man? And the plumbing don't match. And I never met any gay people in the village. Gay, the word gay means extremely happy. And I never met anybody that was extremely happy there that didn't have Christ. And we're teaching our children that all this is okay. Homosexuality is okay. Be tolerant of everything. Homosexuality, if you go back historically, has destroyed every great empire. There's something wrong there. Hmm? God created Adam and Eve. That's the family value. That's, that's the template for families. Hmm? If we criticize them, oh, you are a whatever. Hmm? Listen, if you keep going in that direction, you die that way, read the book. Don't mess with God and God's rules. Hmm? We, God is love, but he gets angry too. Today, everybody's afraid to say anything. <laughs> We're very sensitive. I had to go to, what do they call it? Sensitivity training. That's the new word for it. You might have been there yourself. And I asked a question. I said, I come from an Italian background. Suppose myself and another person of the same background were telling a joke about Italians. Oh, you can't do that. I said, just him and me are talking, and we're both the same. No, you can't do that. You, you can't today say anything without somebody taking it apart. The bottom line is we're going to heaven. And the only thing we can really say is what this book says. Whether people like it or not, I love you, but you're not living the lifestyle that God has created you for. All this stuff about being born that way, mm -mm 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 -mm. many people that we've arrested have done terrible things. First thing they'll say is, somebody did it to me. So that's why they do it to somebody else. It's not about being born. It's something happens up here and causes these things. We live in an interesting country. And unfortunately, like a brother told us last week, we, make, we are the template for the world. If somebody who's prominent in our country had their hair spiked like this and blew, all of a sudden, all over the world, people would do it rest the same way, right? We live in a country that has so many blessings in spite of all our mess. Could you imagine if America really came to Christ? How blessed this nation would be? Read it in the word of God. The nation that blesses God, serves God, will be so blessed. They wouldn't even have to have an army or a navy because the fear of God would be upon their enemies. We're a blessed nation. People say, how do you know that? I says, you know how I know that? It's one of the few countries where people are trying to sneak into. And if your country's so good, what are you doing here? Mm? It's a blessed country. There's opportunities here. Unfortunately, Americans are lazy. Other people come in here and see all the opportunities, right? Unfortunately, we're a bunch of complainers. You ever read the voice of the people in the newspaper? People write in comments about issues, complaining. On the internet, there's even a site called the Complaint Station. Millions of people log on just to complain about something. Hmm? There are even Christian complaint sites spewing hate and gripes about everything and anything. Even in church, they're complainers. In our food pantry, they're complainers. Remember this one guy? He would come every week. Either there was too much food or not enough food. So when he came in, I said, what's the subject today? We all want to know. Would you really want to be around people 
or hateful or ungrateful. Do you? Not really. Nobody likes that. There was a study done about 10 years ago that concluded that grateful, thankful people receive many benefits because of their perspective in life. You've heard the saying, is the glass half full or half empty? How you see life as a Christian, even a non-Christian, affects your body and your mind. Thankful, grateful people enjoy better physical health. Hmm? A lot of the things that people are suffering from now, they have all kinds of anti-anxiety medication. Staten Island, over half the adults are on it. Hmm? What's wrong with us? People who are grateful enjoy better social relationships, better spiritual relationships as well. Hmm? Gratitude not only makes people feel good in the present, but increases the likelihood that people will function at their optimum and feel good in the future. If you feel bad about yourself, you might as well dig a hole and jump in. There's a saying in Italian, it comes out in English this way, one foot in a grave and the other one on a banana peel. If you see life like that, life will be like that for you. You see, gratitude and thankfulness is better for you than vitamins or workouts at the gym. Hmm? Your attitude. And as Christians, think about all the good things that God has given us. Why do we have bad attitudes as Christians? Grace, the grace of God should create a thankfulness and a gratitude in every believer in Jesus Christ, not just in the spiritual realm, but in everything that we do. If gratitude and thankfulness were worldwide, wouldn't the world be a better place? Hmm? Is that what Paul was trying to teach us when he wrote these words? Second, 1 Thessalonians 5.18. You ready? In everything. Mm, what's everything? Everything. Give thanks. You mean because I'm sick? You mean because I've lost my job? You mean whatever? Yes. In everything give thanks. For it is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Nobody likes negative things. But if we are under the blood of Christ... We are under grace. We can say, thank you, Lord, there's a reason. And I trust you. Because when one door closes, another door opens. Sometimes sickness leads to miracles. And that miracle leads to a testimony. And it, it attracts people to the gospel. In Ephesians 5.20, giving thanks always. Not just when things are going well. Hmm? Giving thanks always in all things. Wow. This is a man, when you read his resume in 1 Corinthians, of all the negative things that happened to him after he came to Christ. Even the church was against him. They didn't trust him. Giving thanks in all things. Galatians 3.17 And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Wow. Paul's writings to the church are filled with thankfulness and gratitude to God in spite of what he himself suffered through, and he did. He even had a physical problem that he couldn't get rid of. God says, my grace is sufficient for thee. Hmm? Some of these guys on TV with the Rolex watches and the big cars and the planes, maybe they need a little thorn in the flesh so they can say, oh, my grace is sufficient for me. Hmm? 2 Corinthians 2.14 for your notes. Now thanks be to God who always, always leads us in triumph in Christ. In other words, if you're following God's path, you will always win. Hmm? You'll always win. No matter what you're going through, you'll always win. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God, 
who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. How many needed a victory this morning? Trust God and thank Him before you even see it. See, we have this bad habit, even as Christians. I remember years ago, a lady coming to me and says, Oh, Pastor John, I was praying for you. I knew the Lord was going to meet your need. I said, why didn't you tell me that while I was going through it? Well, you wait to see if it happens and then take credit for it? Hmm? We need people who are encouraged to say, I'm praying with you. God's going to do it. Not wait till it happens. And then say, I, I was the one that prayed. Oh, yeah, you were. Hmm? Hallelujah. In everything, give thanks. Do you know the Apostle Paul wrote four of his letters to the churches from prison? From prison. And the same words that we just said and so many others throughout all of his writings about thanking God before you even see it. Isn't that the de definition of faith when you think about it? If you thank him after it happens, is that faith? Or how about thanking him before it happens? That's faith. Saying, God, I know you're going to get me through this. I thank you. I don't know how. I don't know when, but I know you're going to do it. Oh, boy, you get God's attention. Even in the Old Testament, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and then into his courts with praise. Thanksgiving opens the door to miracles. Thanksgiving opens the door to answered prayer. Hallelujah. If we could look at a transcript or a writing of all the words we have spoken over the last month, hmm? what would it reveal about our character, our faith, our gratitude, or our thankfulness to God? Ever lose your keys? What do you do when you lose your keys? You go nuts, looking all over the place, right? I've learned a lesson a long time ago. Lord, help me to find those keys. Thank you for, for, for finding them. And you know what? I always find them. Or whatever it is. Hmm? God, you know, God has a sense of humor. And he teaches us things all the time. Years ago, I had a raincoat. I loved it. And one day I got in the car and I slammed the door and I broke the buckle. I went to every store I could think of to find that buckle. They had buckles. They were either too big or too small. And I felt terrible. I used to see that thing hanging there with no buckle. One day I said, Lord, I didn't pray for it. But I kept looking at it. One day, the doctor's hospital was over here. I went to visit somebody. I walked out. We didn't have this building here. I walked around. I was going to walk along the street, along the sidewalk. Clear day. I'm walking along the sidewalk. And I looked down. There's a buckle. And I pick it up. Nobody's around. It was just a buckle, not even the, the, the strap. I'm looking at it. I had my coat on. Ooh! Perfect! I stood there on Taji Street. I don't know who went by in the car. They must have thought I was nuts. I said, Lord, thank you. You know what it taught me? That God is concerned about the little things in your life. And if he's concerned about the little things, he's concerned about the big things. So stop complaining. And start thanking him. There are times in our lives we're late for some place. Now, don't take this. And it works every time. Traffic is bad. You couldn't get there. But you know what? I always thank God. I say, you know, Lord, probably an accident that I missed. Or some other thing that could have fallen out of the sky or off a building. God loves you. We really don't understand that. He loves you so much that he's worried about everything about you. The Bible says he knows the number of hairs on our head. I keep saying, Lord, I'd like to get a few more back. 
had a nice big head of hair. God loves you. The Apostle Paul was stoned at Lystra, not on drugs, stones. Driven out of Thessalonica, rejected by the Athenians, jailed by the Philippians, apprehended by the Caesareans, carried on in chains to Rome, shipwrecked on the way, released, imprisoned again, thrown in a dungeon and martyred for his faith. He lived with an infirmity, a thorn in the flesh every day. In spite of all this and more, he continued to thank God. Hmm? Could you do that? Instead of looking at the moment, look down the road. Where are you going? He thanked God always. Hmm? For believers in Christ, faith and hope and love and th thanksgiving should be our testimony. No matter what the circumstances in our lives are going on. Hmm? Paul writing to the Roman church in Romans 8, 37, he tells them prophetically of coming persecution, tribulation, distress, and famine, and nakedness, and, 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 and the sword, and peril, and all these things. And yet he concludes with these words. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Paul was telling us by example, I can stand against anything and everyone who is against me because I know in Christ I win in the end. Do you know that this morning? You win if you follow Christ. One day we'll stand before him and justified by him and forgiven because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Don't you want to hear these words? Well done, my good and faithful servant. Hmm? Well done. I want to hear them. How about you? Therefore, we can laugh and we can sing with joy, the joy of heaven, through the worst situations in our lives. We're not crazy because we know we win. Hallelujah. We can live every moment here in the abundance and thankfulness and gratitude that flows upon us because of God's grace. Because no matter what happens to us, it doesn't compare to what God has prepared for us. And sometimes we get it here. Hallelujah. There's an old song as we conclude in the rushes, get ready. It says, marvelous grace of our loving Lord grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. Yonder on Calvary's mount outpoured, there where the blood of the Lamb was spilt. Dark is the stain that we cannot hide. What can avail to wash it away? Look, there's a flowing, a crimson tide. Whiter than snow you may be today. Marvelous, infinite, matchless grace, freely bestowed on all who believe. You that are longing to see his face, will you this moment his grace receive? Grace, grace, marvelous grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, 